Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to the first Zelos review of 2021, although I'm sure it won't be the last. Zelos, one of the most prolific brands on the market today. This is their third new release of the year and we're not even at March yet. First, it was the Black Tip 41mm Diver. Those almost sold out already. Then the Swordfish 40mm in stainless steel. They all sold out every single watch in less than half half an hour. Today I have got the 40mm Swordfish but in bronze. I don't think they'll go quite so quickly. Bronze tends to be a little bit more niche than stainless steel, but as always with Zelos, don't hang around and expect the colour of your choosing to be available for you to buy in two weeks time because it might not be. This one launches this week. I'll leave a link to the Zelos website in the description of the video. Now you saw the pop-up I am sure. This video is sponsored by Zelos. They sent me this watch for free. I do not have to send it back. It's kind of a two for one review today. I'm gonna to review the watch, obviously. I'm also gonna review the bracelet. You saw the thumbnail, bronze watch, bronze bracelet. I believe this is a world first. It's an entire top surface bracelet in bronze. The only semi-bronze bracelet that I've reviewed on the channel so far was the bicolored Oris Diver 65 from a couple of years ago, but that only had bronze caps on the mid links, not the outer edges and the clasp. This one is entirely bronze. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. You know, I honestly could not have scripted this better had I actually scripted it. Last night as I slept, I got an email from Omar Sharif. You wait till I tell my mum that I got an email from Omar Sharif and she didn't. She always quite fancied him. Omar says, hey Jody, I'm looking to buy a bronze watch for less than $400. What do you recommend? Omar, I recommend that you watch the next 10 minutes. You really cannot go too far wrong with a Zelos. Assuming you, you like the look, they are all quite contemporary in their designs. They're well priced though. They're well packaged. The loom's fantastic. They're well made. And I've said it before, it's well Worth saying again though, if you get it wrong with a Zelos, if you change your mind, you are likely to get the vast majority of your money back because there's a fantastic, very strong second-hand trade in these things. All right, two reviews in one today. I have the watch here, which is the meteorite dial version on the Black Tropic strap that it comes with. And I also have the full bronze. Let me get it out of the hole. The full bronze bracelet to show you as well. So this 40 mil bronze swordfish certainly looks familiar to me. I haven't reviewed a 40 swordfish as yet on the channel, but I have reviewed plenty of its bigger brothers, the 42. The last one actually was the titanium 42 mil swordfish, which made it into my top five best watches of 2020 video. At the end of last year, this one certainly looks familiar. 40 mil in diameter, actually, I measure it at slightly larger than 40. I measure it at about 40.5 mil in diameter, but that's not an issue. 12 and a half mil thick, 45 mil lug to lug. So they've kept that lug to lug dimension very compact, wears nicely. 20 millimeter lug width, and on this supplied Tropic rubber strap, nice and flexible, this one weighs in pretty much spot on 100 grams. CUSN8 marine grade bronze case, crown, and bezel. Flat sapphire crystal with anti reflective undercoat. Now the bezel is a 120 click unidirectional rotating dive time. I got the meteorite dial. It does have a ceramic bezel insert. They haven't gone for double meteorite this time, just meteorite and ceramic. Really nice and clicky action. Everything lines up perfectly as it always does with Zelos. Likewise, a now familiar set of angles adorn the case. Always reminds me a lot of the Seiko Samurai, but that is no bad thing. Semi-guarded crown, Zelos branded crown there, nice and easy to grip. Case finishing, you don't really expect or necessarily want. Fantastic, fabulous, polished and mixed brushed. Case finishing on a bronze watch because it's gonna patina anyway, as long as it's nicely done, as long as the angles are all crisp and sharp, and they are in this case, that's really what you're hoping for. You're also always looking for a stainless steel case back. In spite of the fact that the case material used here is bronze, you want a stainless steel case back because bronze on your skin will eventually turn it green, given half a chance, a little bit of water, and the passage of some time, whereas stainless steel is inert and doesn't react. It's also far less likely to cause an allergic reaction. Screw down 200 meters, and there is the embossed swordfish. I must say the etching is a bit indistinct. It's not particularly deep on this case back. Usual spec 
sheet there though, Swordfish 40, 200 meters sapphire crystal, and all of these are going to be individually numbered. This is number one of 150 for the meteorite colorway. Behind that case back is the ubiquitous Seiko NH35. Color match date wheel and the date complication is down at six o'clock, as I'll show you in just a second. And it's the standard Zelos Tropic here, 20 millimeter lug width as mentioned. Not quite released though, which would have been nice. If you do opt for the bracelet, it would have been good to be able to swap them back and forth easily. Two retainers and a matching CUSN8 bronze buckle and tang etched with the Zelos Z. Now I have the slightly more expensive meteorite dial version as mentioned. Now as such, that has a sandwich dial. So rather than the index is being applied, they're actually cut out into the meteorite dial. Two double batons cut out at the 12 o'clock, large batons at the 6 and 9, a little rectangle cut out just beneath the beveled edge date complication at the 6, and regular sized tapered batons cut out everywhere else. There is a printed minute track around the outer edge. The Zelos logo is printed underneath that double baton, the kind of beaver's tooth up there at the 12 o'clock, and two little bits of colour. Swordfish 40 is printed on in white underneath the pinion, and so small I can barely make it out with the naked eye, 200 meters, 660 feet printed in red. It would probably have done well to have been slightly larger if you actually want to read it. It does color match nicely though with the tip of the paddle second hand and that little vintage style triangle there up at the 12 o'clock on the bezel insert. Handsets a carryover from the other swordfish models, somewhere between fence posts and cathedrals, I always think, with a segmented minute hand and a plain hour hand, all nice and done, no rough edges on these ones, and heaps of loom. I'll put the loom video in now. Loom has always been a bit of a Zelos specialty. I'm guessing this is C3 vintage style old radium. Certainly it looks that way from the tones on the dial with the lights on, and it looks that way when I switch the lights off. No shortage of it though, slight mismatch between the bezel insert and the dial, but I'll crank the speed up here and you can see that even towards the end of the 20 minutes, no problems getting a good clean read on this one. And that's it on wrist on the Supply Tropic. One thing to note with these Tropics though, I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. I only have three holes remaining and you probably wouldn't want to use the last one. So I've effectively got two holes remaining. Not for big guys then, therefore not with the stock Tropic strap. I guess though big guys have already purchased a 42 millimeter swordfish or perhaps one of the bigger bronze offerings from the Zelos range. This one is aimed at gentlemen or ladies with slightly smaller wrists or who prefer their watches slightly smaller so that short tropic strap isn't going to be as much of an issue I don't think. Overhead shot nice and legible even with the Fotina style hands and indexes on this one against that black meteorite dial. 40 has always been my personal sweet spot. This one just about optimum for me. And that pretty much wraps up my review of the Zelos Swordfish 40mm in bronze as supplied on the Tropic Strap. A lot to like, not much to dislike. My only two complaints about this one, my two moans and niggles are the rather short Tropic Strap and the one year warranty. I always call Zelos out for only offering one as opposed to two, but it doesn't stop them selling out every time. Great value for money, $300. If you're looking to add a bit of bronze to your collection, but you don't already have one, then for 300 bucks, you can't go too far wrong with this. Now, let's have a look at the bronze bracelet. And there it is. Is it a world first? I suspect it is. I haven't seen any company offering a full bronze top surface bracelet. Like I mentioned, only that Bico Oris, which had the bronze caps on the mid links and steel outer edges. Now, I did clarify with Elshan, the owner of the brand, when this one arrived in Sydney, if it used the same grade of bronze as the case because there was a slight color mismatch and there still is. He assured me that there was the same CUSN8 marine grade bronze and the two of them would patina together, maybe just different thicknesses, different factory finishes, etc, etc. Now, as far as I can work out, this is identical to the Swordfish bracelet, just different materials. So if you've owned a Swordfish in the past or you've seen a couple of reviews, this should look familiar. All upper surfaces are in bronze, so all of the tops of those links, the bracelet fold over and the bracelet clasp. However, if I flip it over, you can see, much like a stainless steel case back is a preferred to a bronze case back, you don't want bronze backing to those links so they are split links it is a stainless steel backing and that looks like a rose gold ip coated stainless steel clasp there as well
And if I zoom in on the side of the bracelet, you can see screw links. I had no problems adjusting these ones. Also quick release spring bars for ease of changing. And you can see there, it's a bit of a sandwich. Stainless steel on the lower surface and bronze on the upper surface. But let's get it on the watch and get it on wrist. And there it is, and I must say, it is a pretty spectacular effect overall. Assuming you like bronze, that is. But do bear in mind, it is not going to stay this shiny forever, unless, of course, you keep treating it with lemon juice to remove the patina. Which brings me on to patina and how I think this watch is going to age. I've run a couple of bronze watches long term, both Zelos, actually, a Mako 1, which I sold, and then a Mako 2, which I rebought because I regretted selling the Mako 1. And in my experience, if you're going to get them wet, if you're going to be taking them in and out of pools in the sea, you have to keep turning the bezel to ensure that it doesn't corrode together, it doesn't fuse. Now, that is one piece of bronze on bronze that you want to keep fluid, you want to keep moving. What about all of these other bits of bronze that have the potential if you don't clean them, if you don't wipe them down after use, if you just chuck it in a box or in a drawer somewhere, has the potential to corrode and therefore fuse to each other. Now, I can show you what it looks like box fresh and it looks pretty amazing, but I can't tell you what it's going to wear like in six months time. That comes down to you. If this is a world first, if this is the first bronze bracelet watch and you pick yourself up one of these this week, then you are going to be the pioneers. You're going to be telling me in six months time what it's like to live with a bronze watch as a daily and how this bronze bracelet, bronze case, bronze bezel arrangement looks and how it patinas over the course of time as well. $200 is obviously not an insignificant sum. It's either two fifths or one third of the cost of the watch, depending on whether you go for the regular dial version or the meteorite version like this. But I think that many, many people will option the bracelet on just because there's nothing else like it on the market at the moment. It's certainly well made. It's not going to turn your arm green thanks to the colour matched or non-colour matched stainless steel elements. My only complaint about it really, it's one of these ones that you have to double click to make sure it's all secure and there is still a little bit of wobble there from that fold over clasp. Nothing too out of the ordinary though. Now, there's a real sport that has emerged in recent years, people trying to force patina onto their bronze watches using boiled eggs, vinegar, ammonium, and various other things. I hear even leaving them to soak in milk overnight and then leaving them in red wine for a couple of hours is a new technique. You get a really nice multicolored iridescent style of finish. I can see that sport taking up a notch as people try and force patina onto their bracelets and the clasp of their bracelet and not just the watch head in this case. Bronze watches are a bit of a niche within the industry because of the colour tones, because of the material and the way that it will change with time. I guess bronze watches with bronze bracelets is going to be a niche within a niche. But $500 for the standard package or $600 with the Meteorite, I still don't think that's a bad deal for a watch as original and interesting looking as this one. So will this be a bit of a one-off or will Zelos be starting a trend here? Will other companies rush to make full bronze capped bracelets for their bronze cased watches? I guess only time will tell on that one. For now, as far as I'm aware, it's unique. Perhaps there was no great surprise that it was Zelos that did it first. So there you have it, Omar, are you still watching the video? You are a lucky man, not many people get an entire video in reply to their email. I guess you know my answer now, what would I suggest for less than $400 in bronze? I would suggest you take a good look at this when they release it this week. You really can't go too far wrong with a Zelos, you can't get much better than this for the money either, I don't think. The bracelet is another kettle of fish, $300 for the watch is a great deal, $300 plus $200 is still a pretty good deal overall. Time will tell, I guess, whether a bronze capped bracelet is a total fad or whether it's going to become the market norm. I'll be really interested to see how this one patinas and how people get on wearing it as a daily in the months and years to come. Thank you for watching. I will see you in a future video, which may or may not be dedicated to another one of Omar's emails.